How you doing today? I'm so glad you guys tuned in this morning because today we have a science experiment for you. You ever done a science experiment before? I have, and they're lots of fun. So come take a look. We're going to do it using some dish soap, milk, and my favorite, food coloring. All right, so the first thing you want to do is get your pan here and then get whole milk, not 2%, not skim, whole milk, and just cover it enough so where the bottom of the pan is covered. Not too much. If you get too deep, the experiment doesn't work so well. Believe me, I tried. After that, you, you get the food coloring. We have some orange here. We'll put a couple drops of orange in there. Let's see, what color should we do next? We have pink, purple, and teal. Girls, yeah, yep, I heard you say pink. Let's do that one, all right? Pink. There we go. Purple, all right, we'll do that one next. Just go down the line. Now, it may not look like much in here. You like, just looks like a polka dot in the milk. But I think you're gonna be pretty impressed with what happens here in a second. There we go. You have all those little dots there. It may look like it's just really small, but you take your Q-tip, like this one. Make sure you get really saturated in the dish soap. And then, ready for this? Just swirly, swirly, swirly. Look at that. Look at all that color. It's like a tie-dye shirt, isn't it? And the more I mix it, it changes colors. I'm gonna spill milk everywhere, colored milk. Now, how'd you like to have that in your cereal in the morning, huh? But it's pretty cool because it changed color and all I did was dip the Q-tip in the milk and swirl it around. And look at all that. It's still changing color and bu bubbling up different colors. Isn't that cool? Wasn't that so cool how just adding some soap to the milk completely changed the way the milk looked? It was something simple that changed it into some kind of cool art. Kind of like highlight art, honestly. It's pretty neat because the bottom line today is that Jesus changes the way you see everything. You have to remember that our focus is on faith, which means that we trust and what we cannot see because of what we can see. Let's go listen to our Bible story and discover how someone's life was completely changed because part of the time, what he couldn't see even. But before we do that, before the Bible story, we got to do my favorite time of Sundays, which is what? Worship, that's right. So everybody stand up at home. I want to see you guys moving as we do the worship songs today. Let's sing. I'm in the roughest water I won't go under, I won't drown When I'm in over my head I know that you won't let me down When I'm broken And down to nothing I know that you are always up to something good Thank you. 
you guys did so good. Those are some great worship songs. I love to praise our awesome God. I think we should keep on worshiping, but this time I want you to listen to the story and listen in and think about how Jesus changes the way we see everything. Let's watch. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. If anyone was set up for the good life, it was Saul of Tarsus. Greetings. Though Saul's family was Jewish, he was also born a Roman citizen. Throughout his life, he was known by two different names. You may call me Saul or Paul. As a young man, Saul was sent to Jerusalem to study with the famous Rabbi Gamaliel. Let's see. You have achieved 100% in classical literature, 111% in philosophy, and in ethics, 99%. Oh, oh, I vow to do better. Saul became a Pharisee like his father before him. He carefully studied God's law and prayed three times a day. Dear God, help me follow your laws 100% perfectly. Like the other religious leaders in Jerusalem, though, Saul was caught off guard by the events that surrounded the life and death of Jesus. Good riddance. Now that fool can't try to overturn God's laws anymore. Haven't you heard? Jesus' follower says he's returned to life. They've seen Jesus? They've seen Jesus. <laughs> Ah, oh, those riffraff will slink away soon enough. Against all odds, the followers of Jesus didn't fade away. In fact, the numbers began to grow. Five thousand? You're telling me that five thousand people are following the way of a dead man? Well, technically, they think he's alive. Ugh, not helping. The religious leaders in Jerusalem did everything they could to squash the new movement. They even arrested a leader among the Jesus followers named Stephen. After telling lies about him, they dragged him outside the city. This man is a disgrace. Saul stood by and held the coats of the men who picked up stones and threw them at Stephen until they killed him. If Stephen had just let go of this Jesus nonsense, he wouldn't have had to die. It's terrible. I heard people are following the way of Jesus in other cities too. What? Inconceivable! Saul quickly became known for hunting down people who believed in Jesus. When he discovered that some Jews in Damascus were following Jesus, he went straight to the high priest. Ah, this Jesus thing is spreading everywhere. I'm aware. They think he's alive. Hashtag, yup. Someone should do something. I hope you have something constructive to say. Give me letters to the synagogues in Damascus so I can arrest all the believers and bring them back here. Now you're talking. Saul set off for Damascus with the blessing of the high priest. He traveled with a group of men to arrest the believers they found. After days on the road, they neared the city. There it is. We'll make it by lunch. No, we must take time to pray. As he did three times every day, Saul stopped and turned to Jerusalem to pray. Certain God was on his side. Dear Lord, help me to catch every single one of those despicable Jesus people. Suddenly, a light more brilliant than the midday sun blazed down around Saul. He staggered, fell to the ground, squeezing his eyes shut against the glare. Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Saul gasped. It felt as though the whole earth shifted beneath him. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. The men around Saul stared in horror and confusion, unable to speak. They could see no one, but heard a sound, perhaps like a roar of thunder. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. Saul reeled. 
He struggled to his feet and finally opened his eyes. He saw nothing, only darkness. What? What's happened? You tell us. We saw the light, and you fell, and this sound, and then you said- I can't see. What? I can't see. I've been blinded. Uh, that's not good. Here, take my hand. Saul grasped the man's hand and shuffled a few steps forward. Who are you talking to? I, I think, I think it was Jesus. You heard Jesus? I heard Jesus. Saul's companions led him into Damascus, where he stayed at the home of a man named Judas on Straight Street. Uh, want something to eat? I'm not hungry. Or water? Not thirsty. For three days, Saul wrestled with himself and God. He'd come face to face with the very man he knew was dead, but discovered that Jesus was very much alive. Now blind, Saul was forced to see everything in a brand new light. All right, let's see who's paying attention today. Are the events in the Bible true, or are they made up stories? That's right, they're true. Everything in the Bible really happened. Now, who arrested believers of Jesus? Saul, that's right, Saul arrested them. And whose life was completely changed because they became a believer in Jesus? Yep, that's right, Saul again. What is trusting in what you cannot see because of what you can see? What is that called? Faith. Great job, you guys are way too smart for your own good. One more way that we can remember that God is there is by talking to him through prayer. So I want to take a minute, everybody bow your head, close your eyes, and I'm going to pray for us right now. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, thank you so much for showing us through Saul's story how you pursue us and want to speak to us. Help us to get to know you more through your son, Jesus, so we can see our lives through your eyes. Speak to us and show us areas in our lives that you want to change because knowing Jesus changes the way we see everything. Thank you so much for all the boys and girls who tuned in today. Jesus, I pray that we can see them again on Sundays very, very soon. Thank you for their faithfulness and watching church online every week. Thank you for their parents, helping them get everything set up. And we ask all these things and pray these things in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Don't forget to do your church activity. Next week, we will see you again next week.